Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and this is part three of our Praxis Core Grammar Series. In this video, I talk about commonly confused words like affect and effect, as well as research skills covering MLA and APA formatting. Let's get started. So now let's take a look at wrong word choice and vague pronoun, all right? Now this is something that comes up in the specs as well. Now a lot of people don't even understand this. So, and a lot of times people, you're going, a, you're going with the way it sounds. Don't go with the way it sounds. Go with the proper grammar, okay? So we have here, remember, this is uh, like ones that we see, A is going to be no change. So we have companies test new drugs to see how they affect people. Okay, two things going on here. I'm talking about wrong word choice, and I'm talking about vague pronoun. So we have companies test new drugs to see how they affect people. All right, whenever I see the word effect or affect, I wanna slow down because they're probably testing my affect versus effect knowledge. And I have this word they here. Remember, whenever you see they, their, or them, slow down. They're probably testing your pronouns because people mess up pronouns all the time. It's one of the laziest things that we do in our normal speak we mess up our pronouns. So I'm gonna show you how this, this works here. So um, there is a problem here. Companies test new drugs to see how they affect people. Well, who's they here? Companies, are they the they? Or are the drugs the they? Because I have two plural nouns here. I have drugs and I have companies and I have one pronoun, they. That is what vague pronoun is. So um, this happens a lot in writing. So if you are proofing your writing on test day, Check your pronouns. If you use the word they, and you were talking about like students and programs, both in the same sentence, and you just have a they in there and you're hoping your reader just knows you're talking about programs or you're talking about students, don't. It's not grammatically correct. And in this case, it's wrong. It is a vague pronoun. So we know A is out just from that. And now we have effect. Okay. We're gonna go through the difference between effect and effect here. In this case, effect is incorrect. Let me show you really quickly the difference between effect versus effect, okay? So, effect is the verb. Effect is the noun. We're gonna keep it simple. Um, making sure that you can spot these on test day. If you see the word effect or effect anywhere, slow it down, they're testing you here, okay? Now, when we use affected me, the drug affected me, did the drug affect you? Did it do something to you? If you see an ED here, EDs go on verbs, okay? Affected, just like walk, walked stopped, EDs only go on verbs. So if you see something like effected, it's not, it's incorrect. We don't put EDs on nouns. We don't say walled, chaired, right? EDs don't go on nouns, they go on verbs. So in this case, effect is the verb and you're gonna put the ED there. Now in up here, we have companies test new drugs to see how they do something to people, how they affect people, the verb, how, what they do to people. Now, with the effect is the noun, you would say the effect of the drug is uh, drowsiness. Oh, let's do... The effect of the drug is weight gain, okay? Let's say you take the drug and, and you gain weight, okay? The effect, the effect, okay? The indicates that a noun is coming. The door, the dog, the tree, the window. A and an also mean a noun is coming. An effect of the drug is weight gain is drowsiness, an effect. So if you see an, it's gonna go with effect, the effect. If you see an ed, it's gonna go with effect. Here's a little mnemonic for you to remember it, okay? You can also remember it this way. A 
very easy noun. Sometimes I have to say this to myself. A is the verb, E is the noun, okay? A, very easy noun. Say that to yourself. A is the verb, A is the verb, E is the noun. A, very easy noun. In this case, the drug is doing something to somebody. It is affecting the people. How are they affecting people? How do they affect people? So A is definitely out and anything with effect, effected, never, no, effected, with the E, we don't put EDs on nouns. You'll see that B and C are out. Just by knowing affect versus affect, you don't even have to read these sentences. Just look and see. Now I have D, companies test new drugs to see how they affect people. You might be tempted to grab D here because I've got the right effect. However, I've got that vague pronoun here and it doesn't go with companies. Well, it does, it goes with companies, but it also goes with new drugs. Who am I talking about here? All right, so, uh, we need companies test new drugs to see how the drugs, sorry, should be the drugs, affect people. E is the best answer choice there, okay? All right, now let's talk quickly about fewer versus less. Many, 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 many people mess up fewer versus less. I hear it on TV all the time. It drives me absolutely crazy. When we were talking about coronavirus, I heard this on the news. Someone was saying, um, we have less beds in our ER or in our um, ICU units. We have less beds. No, 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 no. Fewer. Fewer goes with things that you can quantify in numbers, okay? If I can count the number of beds, if I can count the number of plastic bags, if I can count the number of anything, it's fewer. Please use fewer plastic bags, not less plastic bags. Less plastic, use less plastic, because with less, you cannot quantify. You cannot quantify with less. But with fewer, you can quantify. So fewer bags, fewer beds, fewer dollars. Anything that you can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Less plastic, less money. Uh, what do we say? Our fewer beds, less space. Do you see how less is like general things you can't count, but fewer are things you can put your finger on? So please pay attention to this. This is also considered incorrect word choice. You must pick the right word choice. Now, if you see fewer or less in an answer choice, slow it down. See if you can count the things you're talking about. And if you can, it is fewer. I want to eat fewer M&Ms today than I ate yesterday. But I would say I want to eat less today than I did yesterday. But as soon as I throw in the M&Ms or burritos or brownies or cookies or anything that I can count, it becomes fewer, all right? You will catch people at this all the time and it will drive you insane. All right, now, one more thing I wanna talk about. Well, there's a couple more things. What do I have here? Yeah, there's a couple more things, but we're talking about punctuation here, all right? And there are a couple of things I wanna focus on in this particular thing here. So people do this all the time, especially in emails when you type quickly. I always have to go back because I'll say things like this week's meeting or yesterday's meeting or last night's video. You've, the week owns the meeting in this case. So if you chose A, you were correct. For this week's meeting, Last night's party was awesome. Yesterday's uh, brunch was lovely. These times of day, these periods of time own the situation that's going on. So make sure you look be on the look, make sure you're on the lookout for that. And it's done a variety of ways. And this way I've done it through weeks, but it could be last nights or it could be yesterdays or whatever else like that. Okay. So uh, let's talk about the, the punctuation here really quickly. Okay. So let me just get rid of this because there's some good punctuation here. Did anybody also um, catch the not only but also here? Not only but also is also considered word choice. Let's take a look at this. First of all, we have for this week's meeting, comma, 
That's done correctly, right? Because we use a comma after a dependent clause. Here comes the independent clause. I would like to not only focus on attendance, but also on academic engagement. That's a sentence. So I've got a dependent clause um, separated by an independent clause and a comma is fine. If it were two independent clauses, it wouldn't be okay. We would need more, more stuff going on. But in this case, it's a dependent and an independent. So we're good. So we have this also. I would like to not only, quick tip, when you see a not only, make sure you have a but also. You can't have a not only without a but also, and you can't have a but also without a not only. So let's say that again. Not only has to have a but also, but also has to have a not only. So this is correct. I would like to not only focus on attendance, but also on academic achievement. You might see it like this. I would like to not only focus on attendance, but on academic achievement. Some people do that. Wrong, wrong, wrong but also on academic achievement. Those two things go together. It's like either or and neither nor. Not only, but also, they're married. They're never allowed to break up. They have to be in your sentence. If one is there, the other one is there, okay? So that's all correct. C and D are correct, and E is not correct because um, we don't want E, we want A for this week's. Very good job, guys. All right. Now, let's talk about research skills here. I want to talk about APA and MLA, MLA formatting. On the Praxis Core, you will be tested on your APA and MLA formatting. They want to know that you guys, you know, know what you're talking about there um, because in the, in the, the eyes of the, the test makers, they want to know that you know how to get research, cite research, and it's a really important skill. If you're going to be a professional, you have to know how to cite research. I stand by these questions. I think they should have these questions on the exam. It's really, really important. Now, I, got, I have a quick hack for you to figure out whether it's APA or MLA, okay? APA, for the most part, I know, don't come at me in the comments. I know there are some variations of APA, but for this test, it's going to be basic. APA, American Psychology Association, that's what it's called. It's the type of citation we, we use, is typically last name and date. Now, if it's at the end of a sentence, you have a sentence here saying like 95% of the people said blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to cite where I got that. Okay. It's going to be Smith, comma, 1998. Okay. That is the citation. This is APA. I always use APA. If you have our books, you know that it's all APA. Uh, I know English teachers use MLA, but typically in research um, that has to do with the social sciences, APA is what is done there. And so we have last name and date. So we're looking for APA. So I need the last name. Now, MLA is going to have a page number in there. Okay, MLA is going to have a page number in there. So look at here, I have Wadsworth and I have 263. That looks like a page number to me. Not the correct answer, because if it's APA, I have to have the last name and date. You might also have a page number with APA, but you will also have to have the last name and date, okay? You might, if it's a direct quote, quote, it'll be last name, date, and then page, you know, 53 or whatever. But you have to, have to, have to have last name and date for APA. Now we have here Wadsworth, last name here, but then I have 263 here. This is page number, not APA. I'm being asked for APA. So B is out. Again, I have 263 here, page number, but no, um, no date. No date. I need the date for APA. Okay, D, according to Wadsworth, 2012. All right. I got a last name. I got a date. Looks like APA. And here it says check all that apply. Remember on the Praxis Core, it's a little harder than the FTCE GK ELS. On the FTC, there's only one right answer. On the Praxis Core, there can be more than one right answer. And you will see it where it says check all that apply, okay? So D is good, D is APA for sure. And then E, romantic poetry is characterized by blah, blah, blah. And then I have Wadsworth, comma, 2012, last name, comma, date, APA, D and E 
are the correct answers there. So on the Praxis Core, you might be asked to choose two. So quick hack, let's go over that again one more time. Let me just add. So let's just do a quick hack here. APA equals last name. Last name is two words. Um, and date. You, you have to have the date and the last name for it to be part of APA. Now notice on this here, um, we have, let me erase, uh, I don't want to erase it because, well, yeah, let's notice here under um, D, a lot of people didn't choose D. They went with E and E is right. But let me talk about D really quickly. With APA, you can mention the last name like conversationally kind of, I don't think that's what they call it, but you can basically say, according to Wadsworth or according to Jasper, and then put in parentheses next to it the date that Wadsworth said it. That is also correct, okay? So um, both ways are correct. Notice I have the date. That's what they're testing you on. They're not gonna split hairs on all these little like punctuation. Oh, there's parentheses here or what. Make sure that you equate, and we said it here, APA with last name and date, for sure. There could be a page number after that if it's a direct quote, if you see, um, quotes there could be a page but 100 it has to have the last name and the date mla which is modern language association this is what you probably used in your um, middle and high school language arts class to cite that's going to have last name and the page number is the most important uh, part of the mla um, citations so just know that that'll help you with those that's a great hack just know that it's pretty straightforward on the test they're not trying to turn you into a professor of you know citations they just want to know that you know the difference between mla and apa yes there are other types of citations you can use please don't make it complicated on yourself they're only going to ask you about mla and apa and that's what the specs say